Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to carve a wood spirit. Today we're going to be focusing on carving the hair. So first we'll separate the tufts of hair which help us define the flow pattern and then we're going to go in and detail the hair. So uh, I'll show you the tools that we're going to use today and then we'll jump right into it. Alright, so the tools that we're using in this video are the number 9 10 millimeter, the number 11 3 millimeter, and these are both from the set of 12 and then from the set of seven right here, we've got the number three, 20 millimeter, and the number 12, 10 millimeter, and the number 11, 15 millimeter. All right, so looking at this carving right now, I'm looking at the mustache and the hair up here and notice that there's some sharp corners or hard edges along the mustache and along the hairline up here. So. I'm going to start by taking the 20 millimeter number three and I'm just going to sort of round off these corners here. All right, now we want to draw in the major tufts of hair, and this is where we define the flow pattern as well, which kind of is, in, it, it's a fun creative step because you can, you can draw in some interesting sort of patterns, and I encourage you to be as fun and creative with uh, making it kind of swoopy and having some interesting flow to it. So we'll just draw some swooping lines like this to indicate how the hair will be flowing. And I'll often do a sort of a side part or even a middle part sometimes where, you know, this whole section of hair is kind of swooping over to this side and right here it'll start going the other direction. It'll start going this way. All right, now to separate these tufts of hair here, we are going to take the V-tool. This is the 10 millimeter number 12 V-tool and we're gonna make some deep cuts that follow these lines. Again, always making sure that I'm guiding the tool with my left hand, which is also anchored to the back of the piece. So this gives me good control, and then I have the power coming from my right hand. This will allow you to make deep cuts while also having control. So you're putting a lot of force and pressure on, but when your tool slips out of the wood, if you have your left hand anchored and you're holding it like that, then you won't slip like that. So I'm really focusing on getting some flow and some good depth as well with these tufts of hair. And we want these tufts to come right down to the forehead and to separate the tufts right down to the forehead, I'll take the same V-tool and um, come down. And I'm holding it here like a pencil, just with one hand. And I'm just doing a cut that goes right down to the forehead. But we want to be careful not to go too far and create a V-shaped insertion cut on the forehead itself. So we want to be careful here to stop before we do that. Now we want to do the same thing on the mustache and beard where we draw in some tufts of hair. I'll usually start by separating the mustache into two main tufts and then we can do some interesting swooping patterns of flow, get some depth, and we'll do the same thing with the beard. You can really have fun and get some snaky sort of flowing patterns in here. And now again with this 10 millimeter V tool, we're going to go in and get some depth and follow these, these lines that we've drawn in. All right, now as we've done many times before, we're gonna go in and smooth these sharp corners off with the number three gouge. 
because we don't want hard lines, we want things to be looking smooth and rounded. And I'm using the edge of the tool, sort of the corner, and changing the angle of it um, as I'm following these curved lines. All right, now our tufts of hair are all rounded and smoothed off. And so now we're gonna do a cut on either side of the face that accomplishes two things at once. Um, it's gonna help us define the cheeks a little bit better and also separate the cheek from the sort of side hair, if you will. There's a little bit of hair that we're gonna do that connects the hair on the head to the mustache. So. We can sort of draw in a line for where we want to separate the cheek. Like that. It's often just sort of a rounded line that goes from the edge of the mustache up to the hair. And I've got the number nine, 10 millimeter gouge. And we're just going to trace that line. And Again, this is helping us get more uh, definition in the cheek area and also separating where the hair is from the cheek. And once again, smoothing things out, eliminating the sharp corners with the number three. And I'll take down more material on this side and ensure that I don't take away too much material on the cheek. All right, now we're ready to start detailing the hair. And to do that, we're gonna use the three millimeter number 11. And we're gonna do many, many, many small little cuts that follow the same flow pattern that we've defined on the tufts of hair. And the idea here is to create cuts that are right beside each other so that we get these small ridges and it's these small ridges that will create the impression of uh, you know, individual strands of hair. And that's what is gonna really bring the detail in the hair to life in this carving. Oh, we've got some flakes right there, but that's okay. And we wanna make sure that this detailing comes right down to the forehead. We're gonna hold our tool like a pencil upside down and anchor our hand and just bring it all the way down to the forehead, like this. Ensuring that we don't actually carve right into the forehead, but bring the detailing lines all the way down. Okay, now I'm gonna continue on in the same thing. And I'm articulating the tool, like swinging it out wide with my right hand to bend it like this and get some interesting flow patterns happening can't emphasize that enough. We really want to create a sense of movement with this hair. All right, now with the hair detailed, we can move down to the eyebrows. And the lines of hair on the eyebrows, I like to uh, draw in sort of a wispy way. They kind of turn upwards like that. I'll draw them in with a pencil first, just to get a general idea of where I want them to occupy space on the brow ridge. And as we move laterally to the outer corner, um, the lines will tend to straighten out a bit and go more horizontally across the brow. But uh, closer over here, they tend to be wispy and kind of do a little upturn like that. And so I'll carve the eyebrows again with the number 11. And when I'm doing really fine detailed work where I need a lot of control, I'll often uh, anchor my hand here and use my thumb to sort of articulate the tool. So I'll try to get these wispy little motions
Same idea over here, kind of wispy, more diagonal lines up here, closer to the middle. All right, now we're gonna do some hair for the sideburns on the side of the cheek. So we'll just draw in some lines and these kind of have a swoopy upturn to them as well. No rules exactly on how to draw these patterns of flow, but I like to have them a little bit upturned near the end. They're kind of wispy. And I like to begin these cuts on the cheek side and then come out towards the outer part of the piece. Alright, now the same thing on this side. Just connecting the hair on top down to the mustache. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with the beard. We're gonna fill in all of these spaces with some detailed lines of hair with the three millimeter number 11, making sure that we're not doing any straight lines, but we're doing curved lines to create movement and flow. Again, using the guide of these deeper cuts that we did to separate the tufts or the strands of hair. And we're gonna, we're gonna use that as a guide to follow to determine our flow pattern. And then the same exact idea with the mustache with the number 11, creating details. And the same thing on the other side here, just filling in these spaces with little detailed hairlines. That's it for this video on carving hair and we'll see you in the next one where we talk about finishing and we'll do some sanding and uh, put the finishing coat on our carving. So we'll see you in the next one.